Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on erythroblastosis fatalis and this is also called the hemolytic disease of the newborn. Uh, so what this is is a disease uh, that's associated with the red blood cells uh, and dealing with uh, a baby and generally this is going to be affecting them shortly after birth um, but it does begin in utero. So we're going to take a look at this disease and let's take a look at what we're going to be seeing. First off we want to go back and make sure that we review our RH or D antigens. Um, the, RH and, uh, the RH antigen of the red blood cells does uh, include a variety of other antigens other than D, but D is the most important one. This is the one you're going to see when we talk about positive and negative RH. Um, we're going to see how we sensitize to that. Um, we're going to see who is at risk and who is not at risk for this disease. And uh, we'll look at how the disease occurs and then also a little bit about how the disease is uh, prevented here. So let's take a look at this and begin to see what it is we need to understand. So first off, we know that we have a red blood cell. And on red blood cells, or RBCs, we know that an RBC has various surface antigens on the uh, red blood cell, right? We know that there is surface antigen A, surface antigen B. You can have both A and B, or you can have none of them and have type O blood. And if you want more information on that, just look at my video on blood types, etc. And this is really only one blood group, the most important blood group, the AB blood group, uh, ABO blood group, and uh, but there are others out there that are less important, uh, but definitely worth understanding um, if you're dealing with uh, blood specifically. So what we want to look at is also another one referred to as the RH antigen. And RH does come in two varieties, especially when we're dealing with the D antigen, which is called RH positive or RH negative. If you're RH positive, you do have the RH antigens. You would possess RH antigens on your cell surface. Um, and if you are RH negative, then you would not have these antigens. They would not be present on these uh, red blood cells. So what we want to see about this is uh, the disease that we're dealing with, erythroblastosis fatalis, is a disease uh, associated to RH incompatibilities with the child, um, and this has to do a lot with the mother. Now, first off, when we look at AB blood types, you're born with those antibodies that are against uh, the opposite type. You have anti-A and anti-B antibodies in your blood at birth, and this is uh, very normal. But when it comes to RH, an RBC um, in your blood who has the RH antigens on their cell surface, your body must be exposed to these antigens, and then and only then with proper immune response will plasma cells uh, specialize in activated B cells. Um, only then will they produce an IgG immunoglobulin class G that would be an anti RH antibody. And it takes sensitization. You have to get exposed to it. So let me come explain a little bit of this. If you are a person who is RH negative and somehow you get exposed to blood that is RH positive, then this will elicit the sensitization process while I will produce IgGs that are going to target my uh, this blood here. So then when the antibodies bind to it and this blood ever shows up a second go around, a second sensitization happens and a second exposure to this RH positive blood 
in an Rh negative individual, then and only then would uh, that person produce any antibodies is when you're Rh negative, you get exposed to Rh positive blood, and that person produces anti-RH antibodies. And then if they get exposed secondly, then they might have an immune response to that, and that immune response could be severe. Well, in this disease, what we're referring to, uh, again, uh, we understand now how the RH antigen works and how we sensitize. So who's at risk for a reathroblastosis fatalis is babies. Right Now, what you have is that in a mother, due to the genetics of the mother and due to the genetics of the father, a baby is born with a certain blood type. Now, let's say I have an RH negative mother. And the RH negative mother who gives birth, right, she is going to give birth, she is pregnant with an RH positive child. Now, this is her first birth that she has with an RH positive child. This child is safe from erythroblastosis fatalis, right? The, this child is not at risk. That's because there would be no, in the mother, there are no anti-RH antibodies, right? There are no anti-RH antibodies in the mother's blood. But now the same mother, who is now RH negative mother, she is coming in at her second birth for an RH positive child. When she gives birth, we're going to see how this RH negative mother will now have anti-RH antibodies. We're going to see how she has these and why this happens. And so remember, in order to make anti-RH antibodies, you must first be sensitized. Sensitization only can happen when you are exposed to it. So let's look at how this happens. Let's look at our first pregnancy first and see what happens. So during our first pregnancy, here we're going to look at a placenta, and we're going to have some maternal tissues and fetal tissues we want to look at. So let's look at maternal here. Let's look at fetal here. And here we'd have our placenta, where the exchange between fetal blood will occur, right, to maternal blood. And the exchange between these two bloods occur. Now, mother's blood type, maternal, is RH negative. Fetus being RH positive due to the genetics of the parents. Now, once you've got that this is the first pregnancy of an RH positive child, right? This is her very first RH positive child. And so the red blood cells inside this fetus here, right, in the fetal blood, is going to possess the RH antigens, right? These antigens are present on the blood stream, on the blood cells here. So those being RH antigens here, right? RH antigens. Now in the mother, she does not have these. So when the blood cells are circulating through her bloodstream, they have absolutely no antigens for the RH or D antigen present because that's the way the blood type works. Well, this placenta does allow some materials to pass through, but these blood cells aren't going to be leaking through. So what has to happen is, is she carries for nine months this child and everything's fine. But still, when we look at, remember, this is first pregnancy of an RH positive child, right? And we still have our fetal tissues and our maternal tissues, right? Maternal and fetal. And then there is the bloodstream here for the fetus. There is the bloodstream for the mother, right? 
and the mother's blood is circulating without any of the uh, antigens, and the fetal blood is circulating, right, possessing the Rh antigen. Right, these are on the cell surface and they're present. And she is now going to enter into birth, right? She is going to give birth now. She goes into labor. And during labor, what will begin to happen is hemorrhaging. She will begin to lose her placenta as it detaches. And what is going to occur now is that the blood from the fetus with um, that enters now, enters into the mother's bloodstream, now has these Rh antigens on it. So during birth, the hemorrhaging of placenta, this will introduce to the maternal tissues. Remember, mama was Rh negative and baby was Rh positive. The Rh positive blood enters into the maternal tissues and mama will now start to produce these antibodies the anti rh antibodies and these are of the uh, igg class the type that's produced from plasma cells and that's the reason why they have to be sensitized so at birth mama is now sensitized now she goes through and she will heal up the baby's gone the maternal uh, only the mother bloodstream remains but mama now has kept the antibodies present so the antibodies now would be present in her bloodstream and mama keeps these antibodies in her bloodstream for a while and now what's going to happen is a second pregnancy so this is where things are going to get interesting for us so now let's look at a second pregnancy so now she's going to go get pregnant again the second not secondary just second pregnancy the second pregnancy of a uh, um of a baby that is RH positive. Remember, we are dealing with a maternal tissue here, maternal, and she is RH negative. And at the placenta, we have the fetus here. We have fetal tissues, and the fetus is RH positive. Now, again, this fetus will be the same as the previous fetus. It will have uh, the same type of blood, and mama's going to have the same type of blood as well. Remember that the fetal cells, fetal red blood cells now, they are possessing the antigen uh, for the Rh antigen. They are positive for that. So that's that Rh antigen because the baby is Rh positive and mother's blood is circulating through here again without those Rh antigens. But what is still present here are these antibodies. And remember, these antibodies are anti-Rh antibodies. Now, given that these are anti-RH antibodies. Now, there are a few things that can cross the placenta. A few things can. Uh, alcohol, many lipid-soluble substances, but as well as very important that mama, because she's been exposed to diseases in the past, she can give the baby the necessary antibodies that it needs to be able to subsist and live until its maturing and developing immune system can grow. So what happens is these antibodies will cross the placenta. But when it enters into the fetal bloodstream, it will see these um, antigens, the Rh antigens, and it will begin to bind to them. And what you get is, is a glutination. And with the glutination, the antibodies have macrophaging bi macrophage binding sites, complement binding sites. These will attract macrophages. This will result in destruction of these blood cells. And as these blood cells begin to die, you will see the buildup of things like um, bilirubin, for example, bilirubin, and the baby might be born jaundice. Um, you will have uh, blood cells being damaged, so the baby will become anemic, and things like that will begin to happen. 
And it's actually quite possible that this child might die uh, or die shortly after birth. So this is the problem, is the body is now producing antibodies that cross the placenta. Now, to mention how this is really protected and fixed and corrected and prevented is there is a shot called Rogam. And what Rogam does is it is basically, when you donate blood, blood is gone to, uh, sent to a blood bank where they remove antibodies from the blood using uh, a, a technique and a method. I'm not going to go into that. Um, but when these antibodies are removed, they can be collected and be utilized medicinally in the drug Rogam. And it will be given to the mother. And what it will do is it will make mother's body feel like she's already produced these. And if there is still some, it is fooling the body into thinking it has an immune response so that very few of the fetal cells are destroyed, preventing jaundice, preventing damage, preventing tissue damage, preventing uh, uh, the hemolytic disease from occurring. So, um, really quite an important process and as we saw this is really coming to the fact that I have the second pregnancy right the second pregnancy of an RH negative mother with an RH positive child the fetus uh, here being the one at risk of the disease and the mother is safe. So now what we've done, if we kind of go back and look at this, we can see now how the disease works, who is at risk, but also how it's prevented with the so-called Rogam shot. And um, also I want to mention here that there is some very minor things that can happen uh, with uh, AB blood cells, uh, this, these antibodies also can go in there, but they're so few in circulation, it almost is never a serious issue. It would be very rare. It could happen in conjunction with the RH and be a confounding factor. There is various stages of intensity of the disease, uh, which is also important to understand. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and some of the things I'm going to be doing in the future. So please take time to comment like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future and I hope you find these videos helpful, useful, and uh, just let me know so I can keep on doing things that you guys want to see. Thank you so much and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and have a wonderful day.